What's up guys, Lomax here, and welcome back to another Battleborn character guide. This episode will be featuring Marquis. Marquis, the LLC attacker, is a pretentious robot sharpshooter who will deal damage to you as well as insults. He is capable of putting up massive damage, but must keep a safe distance from his enemies for survival. Now let's dive into his abilities. We'll start off with Marquis' weapon, Bindlebane, his signature sniper rifle slash pistol, which comes with six rounds in a clip. Your primary attack is going to be the pistol, which you can only fire from the hip. And your secondary attack will be the sniper rifle, which deals more damage, but has a slower fire rate. <laughs> And they call me a psychopath. His passive Eins Wide Die causes his shots to mark his targets. The third shot on the same target is going to add 50% bonus damage, so it would be ideal to hit your third shot with your sniper rifle if you can help it. It would also be nice to crit on that third shot, but you can't always get what you want. But with this passive, you're basically getting the damage of 7 shots per 6 bullets, so long as you can proc the passive. It's great against big or slow targets, obviously, but you might have trouble with proccing it on more mobile enemies unless you're a sniping god. So let's go over Marquis' skills. Marquis' first skill, Temporal Distortion, creates a large bubble that will slow any enemies who enter it. This bubble will make it easier to land hits on targets who will struggle to get out of it. It can also be used defensively to distance yourself from your enemies. His second skill, Predatory Strike, allows him to deploy an owl that reveals enemies on the map. Owls act as wards and fly around in a small circular area until an enemy comes near them. They will then take a second and target an enemy with a beam, then promptly fly into them and self-destruct, dealing damage. Be careful though, as they can be shot at or damaged before they get the chance to do damage. You can have a maximum of three out at one time and they will not disappear until they have been shot, self-destruct, or until a fourth one has been placed. Also, a lot of the time, the AI will target your owls, so you can use this to your advantage and use them purely as a distraction. Bindle Blast, Marquis' ultimate, upon use will charge up and then fire a single powerful blast that will deal more damage the longer the shot travels. This skill provides a very high burst of damage, but travels sort of slowly and can be hard to hit at longer distances. Let's get into Marquis' Helix Tree. At level 1, we're going to get to choose between the Greater Houdini and Waste Makes Haste. The Greater Houdini is going to increase Predatory Strike's damage. It's not a super big damage buff, but it's definitely a better option in solo play. The issue with this choice is that your main source of damage is not going to be your Owls. It will be your gun, so buffing this skill won't make a huge difference, but this is definitely better than the other skill in solo PvE. Waste Makes Haste is going to give a short movement speed increase to any ally who passes through it, and this also applies to Marquis. For PvE, the skill isn't that great, but it can save your life in PvP. If you have a melee character jump on you, throw this down in front of you and you'll distance yourself as you get the movement speed increase while your enemy is slowed down. As a vulnerable character in close quarters combat, this is your best bet for any sort of escape without any dashes. I definitely recommend this skill in PvP. At level 2, we're going to get two buffs to Predatory Strike, Phase Flyer, and Who Done It. Phase Flyer will make Marquis' owls unable to collide with the world, guaranteeing they will reach their target destination. So now your owls can go through the walls and objects instead of being destroyed when you send them flying towards a rock. They can still be shot and destroyed, however, making the skill description a bit misleading, as if they are shot, they will not do any damage. Who done it will make Marquis' owls invisible. This can be both good and bad as your enemies won't see them, but you can no longer use them as a distraction. Enemy AI will no longer target your owls when they can't be seen. However, in PvP, enemy players will not be able to see them coming, so you can use that to your advantage. At level 3, we'll get a choice between Ocular Enhancements and Executive Barrel Porting. Ocular Enhancements is going to add a variable zoom scope to Bindlebane, 
giving us an additional 50% zoom. Now there isn't a need for the scope, so I feel it's kind of a waste of a skill point. Now Executive Barrel Porting will reduce the recoil on Bindlebane by 60%. This will be nice if you have a slower stationary target, but if you have a moving target, you'll have to adjust your sights anyways, decreasing the impact of this skill. But with the choice of one, I'll definitely take the recoil reduction. At level 4, we're going to get two skills that buff Temporal Distortion. Time Killer and Big Time. Time Killer is going to add a damage over time effect to Temporal Distortion. This is a great skill in both PvE and PvP, as you get an AoE damaging ability now out of the skill. Not to mention enemies in the bubble are slowed, so they will take more damage as they try and escape. Big Time, on the other hand, which will increase Temporal Distortion's area of effect, isn't bad, but it is a bit unnecessary because the area of effect is already pretty large. Plus, you're giving up damage, so there's that. Ultimately, your build is going to come down to you and your gun, but you never know when that one tick of damage from Temporal Distortion could land you a kill, or save your life. At level 5, we'll get two skills that buff our passive, Efficiency Expert and Einzwei Cry. Efficiency Expert is my preferred choice here. By taking this, every second consecutive hit Marquis lands will proc his passive instead of every third, making it a lot easier to proc. Ein's Y Cry will add a flat bonus damage percentage to Marquis' passive, which is also a good skill. Unfortunately, it is not as easy to land three hits as it is two. With one six-round clip, both skills here would provide the same damage if you only use the sniper to maximize damage and hit every shot. So really, you'd just be getting a bigger hit on every third hit with Ein's Y Cry. But if you can't consistently land three consecutive shots, Efficiency Expert is the better option. At level 6, we'll get another two skills. The first is Long Haul Houdini, and the second is Distant Time. Long Haul Houdini is going to increase Predatory Strike's casting range, while Distant Time is going to increase Temporal Distortion's casting range. The only thing I have to say here is that this choice is all a matter of personal preference, and I would buff the skill that you use the most. At level 7, we're going to get two skills buffing Bindlebane, Autoloader and Bang for the Buck. Autoloader is going to increase Bindlebane's reload speed and attack speed. This skill is great with Efficiency Expert, as the increase in attack speed will allow you to land two shots faster and proc your passive more. The reload speed as well is great, because you'll be reloading often with a 6 round clip. It'll allow you to continuously fire and keep damage on your enemies. Bang for the Buck is going to increase Bindlebane's base damage. Extra damage is nice, but the overall DPS increase does not match that of Autoloader. Plus, the slower fire rate compared to Autoloader might hinder you from proccing your passive more, so I wouldn't recommend this skill. Again, it's not a bad skill, but it is relative to Autoloader. At level 8, we're going to get two skills buffing Predatory Strike. They are Windfall and Hoot of the Vigilant. Windfall is going to make Predatory Strike Owls leave behind an AoE that deals damage over time upon detonation. Keep in mind this will not work if your Owls get shot and killed. It actually provides a decent amount of damage, but the area of effect is relatively small. If you can, combine this with Time Killer, which again damages enemies inside of Temporal Distortion, you can deal some decent damage to your opponents without even shooting them. Hoot of the Vigilant is going to cause Predatory Strike Owls to act as a central unit for a short time. When they target an enemy with their beam, they will then shoot the enemy twice before detonating. The nice thing is that this skill is going to provide guaranteed damage, unlike Windfall, so long as the owl survives until detonation, as once an enemy is targeted, the owl will shoot it. The downside is the damage potential is not as high as Windfall, as it does less damage in general and can only target one enemy with its beam, so I still prefer Windfall out of the two choices. At level 9, we're going to get two skills buffing Temporal Distortion. They are Time to Spare and Cease and Desist. Time to Spare is going to increase the duration of Temporal Distortion. 
The bubble already lasts 6 seconds, which is a pretty decent amount of time. And its alternative choice, in my opinion, is better. Cease and Desist is going to increase okay, Temporal Distortion's left. slowing Appease effect on enemies. There's just so many reasons to take this skill. It'll be easier to hit people, escape people, you can better windfalls effects, I'll take more damage from Time Killer. It's just a better choice here. Finally, we hit level 10 and we're going to get two skills that buff Bindle Blast. Bindle Blasts and Wallhacks.exe. Bindle Blast is going to give Bindle Blast an extra shot at the cost of reduced damage per shot. Overall, this will be a 33% increase in total damage if you are able to land both shots. Wallhacks.exe is going to allow Bindle Blast to shoot through terrain and reveal invisible enemies through the scope when you aim down your sights to shoot it. I really like this skill on PvP maps where enemy players can run behind a wall to dodge your ult. This pretty much eliminates that, allowing the shot to continue through terrain towards your enemy. That's going to do it for Marquis, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about him. He's a really fun character, and if you like sniping, he's definitely the guy for you. As always, feel free to rate and or comment down below if you have anything you'd like to say. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see future videos. I'll catch you all next time.